Hey, this is Keith Brown, Tack Room Devotional. We've been talking about the promise of God, the promise of the Holy Spirit. And uh, the Bible told, tells us, we looked at this earlier this week, that all we need to do is ask. And when we ask, it's God's good pleasure to give us the Holy Spirit. Amen. The promise of God, the Holy Spirit. What for? He endues us with power in order to live this life. Now, but the thing of it is, we not need to ask, and we need to keep asking. We need to seek and keep seeking, and we need to knock and keep knocking. And when we do that, it says we will find, the door will open, and we will receive. Amen? Now, in, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, it says, Do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now here, when it says, but be filled with the Spirit, that means keep being filled with the Spirit. In other words, when it says to ask, remember, we're to keep asking. Why? Because every day we need to be filled with the Spirit. We need to be renewed in the power in our mind. We need to constantly have the Spirit give us new revelation, new truths, right? So that we can walk in this power and we'll be endued with power. Amen. I want to talk to you about something today that I think is very important. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19 says, Do not quench the Holy Spirit. When it says do not quench the Holy Spirit, what that means is we can quench the Holy Spirit. Now why on earth would we want to do that? Why would we want to quench the very spirit of truth that leads us and guides us into all truth, that induces us with power in order to live a victorious life? And yet here it says do not quench the Holy Spirit. I encourage you today, ask knock, receive, and walk in this in the fullness of what's ours. Amen? Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Okay, then if we look in Isaiah chapter 63, verse 10, it says that we can vex the Holy Spirit. That means break his heart. Why in the world would we want to do that to the Holy Spirit? Well, when we don't follow him, the Bible says... Uh, uh, in Romans chapter 8, it says, those that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the children of God. We need to be led by the Spirit of God and be children. And when we don't do that, when we don't uh, hear his voice and, and yield to his prompting for us to be led, then we vex him. We break his heart. But then also, we look in Hebrews chapter 10. Go there with me. Hebrews chapter 10. And verse 29, and the Bible says, Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought uh, worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the Holy Spirit, or the Spirit of grace? In other words, what this is saying is we can insult the spirit of grace. Now, we've studied this before. Grace is the undeserved, unmerited favor of God. Why would we want to insult the spirit of the favor of God? I have no idea. But it tells us we can do it. So again, we need to continually be asking, knocking, and seeking every single day. Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Knocking on that door and, and asking God for the things that we need in order to live a victorious life. Finally, go with me to Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3 and verse 29. And by the way, this scripture also is in um, Luke chapter 12, verse 10, and Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. And this is what it says. But he who has, I'm sorry, but he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal damnation. Now, once again, it says, he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, which means you and I can blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. In other words, we can speak against the Holy Spirit. And some say this is the unpardonable sin. It's that sin that you cannot be excused of. Why? Because you blaspheme. You reject the unction of the Holy Spirit. You reject even recognizing, the, the, recognizing that he exists. That's blaspheming him. And that means we can do that. So listen to me. 
The Holy Spirit is a person, the person of God living on the inside of you, endues you with power, leads you and, and guides you into all truth. Do not insult him, do not vex him, do not quench him, do not blaspheme him, but receive all that God has for us, that promise of his spirit on the inside. I hope this has spoken to you, it sure has to me. Remember, Jesus loves you, so does the Holy Spirit. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.